Hi, my name is Monica Kretschmer. I'm the founder and CEO of the Universal Women's Network, Women of Inspiration Awards, and this is the Women of Inspiration podcast, where we speak with women who lead, inspire, and motivate. These are women who take the road less traveled and inspire others to dream big. Now, today with me is a very special guest. Um, we met during COVID, and we are still in COVID. Uh, you know, uh, but I have to say, I have so much respect for our next guest coming up. She's a storyteller and a philanthropist. She is the founder and CEO of Mother and Daughter Entertainment, um, Elizabeth Blake Thomas. Um, such a great, great pleasure to have you on the show today. You're also part of our 100 Women of Inspiration book. Um, and you're joining us from LA and I'm loving the sunshine that you were surrounded by. Well, do you know what, Monica? It is an absolute pleasure to chat to you again. It really is. You, you are an inspiration yourself as well. And I know it probably doesn't come back very often because you are always bigging us up. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunities. And uh, I am in LA. You're correct. It is definitely sunny today. And so you are here back on my boat like last time. But I think last time we had this outside and this time I'm inside. Yeah, we, but we did start with the dance party. So that was consistent. So in the green room, you know, for those that haven't been on my show before, just a little secret is we have a little bit of a dance party before we get started. We're, cause I like to have fun. We should have fun, but we did do that. And it was on the outside of the boat and it was, you know, right in the very beginning, I think it was in March of 20. Uh, 20 and how the world has changed and I that's why I'm so excited because boy oh boy you do not let the grass grow underneath your feet my dear no I definitely haven't this year was a phenomenal year for me for personal growth as well as business growth in the sense of what I was doing achieving my projects finishing projects but the personal growth has really enhanced where I am with business because you know I even look back at myself and a year ago um, I was still in here the same person but what I was able to do over this last year is really understand who I am and what this means and then that has kind of uh, you know progressed with whatever it is that I've then put my mind to work-wise and so I'm the same person in here but I've been able to understand myself so I want to go back for our listeners and our viewers today. Um, you are out of LA, you are a film director, you're a storyteller, a philanthropist, and I'm going to touch base into all the stuff that you've been working on during 2020, but how did you get to LA? You live on a boat, so number one, I'd love for our listeners to hear about that because it's very unique. Um, but you didn't always live in LA. And of course you've got a beautiful accent. So let's start back with um, where it began. What did you think that you wanted to be when you were 12? Well, do you know what's funny? I was always thinking I could start a story of saying I came over on the boat, couldn't I? I can be like, I traveled this boat across the seas. I, I didn't, I don't even take it out. Um, but I think I look at that, that could be a really cool story. Um, so, I suppose to start with, you know, I've always loved the creative industry, always have. No matter what I've done, I've had a creative side of my brain, but I also have the business side of my brain. So that's why I can never just be an actress. I didn't want to be, you know, put in the hands of other people. I always like to take the opportunities myself, create my own opportunities. And so even at the age of 15, 16, I was running my own theatre company whilst I was actually attending college. Um, and the people, my stu fellow students would come to my theatre camp. Um, and then that continued and I was always in the industry in the sense of drama theatrically and uh, based in London. I got married, had an amazing child who's in the industry and then she got in the industry not just theatrically from what we say theatrically meaning the theatre but actually on film and TV and so I suddenly realised I needed to be there to support her. Her career took off and I didn't want to be a, a manager. I, I definitely didn't want to be that but I know the industry so I could support her and when the opportunity came for her to get an agent out here I took that. Again I always take every opportunity you know, I, I like the word yes. I like the word let's go for it. I like the word opportunity. Um, and so that came up and I said, let's go for it. Now, unfortunately, that meant that 
even though my marriage, my marriage was never perfect, but we really, you know, put that effort in and did our best. Unfortunately, it was the nail in the coffin. Um, and he found somebody that wanted the lifestyle he wanted back in London. And so um, we then stayed here, carried on with the industry. I was told that I should be a director. And that's my, my famous sentence that's on all my interviews where I say, how do I do that? And he says, you just say you are. Um, and, um, and then I ended up creating these projects, just going out there, finding people that wanted to align with the way I want to work, which actually one of the words you've used already is fun. This is about a fun journey. Otherwise, what the heck is the point? Uh, so I'm, I found people that have aligned with me um, and, um, and, and everybody supports the vision that I have. And so this year has been incredibly busy with various projects, which, you know, we can go into. Well, I totally inspiring. So again, single mom, um, your daughter has a career path and let you just like say yes. And I think that that's so, so important for listeners today is, you know, what stops you from those opportunities is action and committing to it and just say, yes, maybe I don't know all the answers, but that's the beauty of it. This is a journey. We're here for only a short amount of time. And sometimes we don't even know how short that is. So fun and action and, and adventure. I, those are three words that come up for you. Optimistic. Oh my and, God, there's more. And not being afraid because let's go to the boat. So I, it's, you know, it is unique. I live on a boat. Um, I don't use the restroom on the boat. I turn that into a walk-in wardrobe. I use the yacht club restroom. Some people couldn't do this. The reason I did this was because I wanted to live a frugal life that allowed me and afforded me time and resources. Again, being a single mum, you know, um, it's, it's a case of when you have that situation of needing to make those resources work, um, it's a case of saying, well, what, what do I need? What am I going to make work? And so for me, living on a boat allowed me to have that lifestyle. And, you know, there are things that you have to go without, but I'm also the simplicity of it is divine um, and allowing me the, the time to get creative and to do things. Well, I do love the simplicity. I, I first said to you, as soon as you popped on, I'm like, I love the sunshine in the background and, you know, you paddleboard and I think, you know, you have dolphins that are in your backyard and, you know, if there's and I have two ducks now, I have two ducks, two ducks to the, team. yeah, they live on my boat. Yeah. yeah they live. Jim and Heather. I only had Heather for a while and then Jim moved in. I'm a bit worried about what they're up to, but they live there. I think Jim's out there now. Heather's still on her. her you might have more decks soon. <laughs> All my ducks are in a row. That's what I like to say. <laughs> so love your enthusiasm, your spirit. Um, I want to dive into a little bit about, you know, I'm, you, you talked about um, somebody said to you, you should be a film director. You have a wealth of knowledge. You have experience in the industry. You've uprooted your family to, you know, live the dream and build her dream. And somebody says, you should be a director. And what was, what was your answer to that again? I think that is so important and it's become one of your anchors. So what was your response? Well, I said, how? And he said to me, you just say you're a director. And I did at that moment went, okay, I'm a film director. Yeah, that's, that's cool. And I just then did what I thought a film director did because that's the other thing you quickly realize it's a big secret nobody knows what they're doing it's all a farce so everybody in this world goes into stuff I mean look I don't want to say I could be a doctor I don't let me perform heart surgery on you it would not be good even though I watch Grey's Anatomy it wouldn't be good um but 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 we don't know anything so therefore we all learn and what's the best way by learning is just by doing it and there are also a million ways to do something. You know, I really find it difficult when someone said, this is the normal way of doing things. There is no normal about it. This world has just proven this last year, there is no normal way of doing anything. So anybody that thinks there's a normal way, I think they should kind of like come and live on a boat. <laughs> well, um, you're certainly setting the stage for that and leading by example and doing it flawlessly. Uh, you've got so many great projects on the go, uh, but I want to step into your book. So another title, yes, let me uh, grab it. another title that you have also earned, and I will say earned, 
is author. So tell us about your book, which is born through the pandemic. Okay. Well, let me tell you this one first, because you'll like this one. So this one was a book I did all about my divorce, but obviously inside it says, well, all the characters are fictional in here. Um, but um, so this is the first thing I did. And it was therapy, it was total therapy and it's embarrassing and it's terribly badly written but it doesn't matter I went and did it okay and that's the purpose of that then since then this filmmaking without fear is the first of my three books I have living without fear and storytelling without fear which are the next ones coming out in the next you know year um, but this was all about my experiences because I wish there'd been somebody like me to help me when I started five years ago, and it's almost five years to the month, actually, when I first said, huh, I'll be a director. And so in those five years, I've got all these experiences that I wanted to share with everybody. And in fact, the first, the first page in here says, um, where is it? It says, who am I? You're a director. And um, you should be a director. How? Just say you're a director. It's that important to who I am. And I am inspired because I watched the whole journey unravel and you set your mind to something and you achieve it. And so there is, so what, what is your secret sauce, Elizabeth, for okay. being motivated? <laughs> the secret sauce is chai. Um, so the, I also have a podcast that I have the same name. I would say it is living without fear because if you put that with anything, it doesn't mean I'm just going to go and jump off a bridge. It doesn't mean I'm going to like jump out of a plane. I mean, I want to, you know, have the parachute attached to me. I'm not, I'm not like fearless in that sense, but I came up with this analogy the other day, which I'm very proud of. F I T. Okay. <laughs> it's always busy on the boat. Hold on, Jack. I'm just on a podcast. I'll have to go. <laughs> this is what it's like on the boat. Constantly. And we don't edit, folks. That's just the way we roll. I know. Exactly. I'll have to speak to you in a bit, Jack. <laughs> um, so, so FIT, which is um, F is for fearless. I is for, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do it in a different way. Um, it's insignificant. Uh, T is for time. But I'll tell you what I mean by each of those. Every day I get on my paddleboard, like you said, I'm afraid of the ocean, okay? I live on a boat and I go on a paddleboard, but I'm afraid of the ocean because every day it reminds me to live in that space because what is the worst that can happen? Okay, I could fall off and drown, but you know, hopefully it's not going to, but you have to live in that space. I, the insignificance, this ocean is so much bigger than me. I am so insignificant. So therefore, why not just do what I want to do to live the best life, be the best person, you know, do the best thing in this world. And then T is the time because I realize that when I'm out there, I can create my time. I need to know how I'm spending my time. Time is the most precious commodity we have. So I always say to people, where are you fit? Where do you have your time to be fit? Um, what were we talking about? Why did I come on to that? <laughs> well, I was just asking you how you stay motivated. Um, oh, there you go. Right? I mean, that it just makes perfect sense to me. Is you know, there is only a certain amount of hours and minutes and days um, on our journey, so make the most of it. Yeah, yeah. There is no point wasting this time. And in fact, we were, we were briefly touching on that before you, you started recording, which is about, you know, anything you put your energy into has to be a positive experience. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying that the world is perfect. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, oh, well, I expect everybody to turn up looking like unicorns with rainbows and candy floss. No, no, I'm fully aware that the world is a hard place. But it doesn't mean that we don't all have a choice to take something from that and say no if it doesn't work for you. And so that was, it's kind of going to go into that next question for you, Elizabeth. So you've now declared, I'm a director, and you start researching, building, you walk like a director, you do you build your day out like a director, you are a director. And so five years in, you've, you've done some huge projects. Um, 
but you've also entered into an industry that is underrepresented, that is that is not well known or accepting of women in that role. So how did you notice the barriers or because you were so focused on, I'm going to do this, did you kind of have blinders on it? Did you actually see it or witness it initially when you got into it? And has it changed over the past five years is my question. It's such a, it's such an interesting one because I feel like all of the above are applicable. It's like, yes, I did have blinders on. Yes, I have noticed it. Does it stop me? No. When does it occur? Every situation is totally different. Have I had support from men? Non-stop. Do I support women? every day it's it's such a hard one and I think maybe that's why it's so difficult to answer the question because initially I think I I used to answer the question with no no I'm fine I haven't noticed yet and I've got great support and I'm not saying that's not right mm -hmm. but I'm saying every single project I get involved in every single person I deal with really does give me a totally different experience so it would be wrong of me to say, oh, I've never had a problem, but it would be wrong of me to say, oh yes, it's really hard. Mm. So. I look, just asked this question, Elizabeth, because I think that sometimes people, when they hear about how complicated it is to break into industries that are underrepresented for women, they're like, okay, the fear sets in and they don't even bother trying, but you just jumped in with both feet and, and you gave it a go. So I just want to know, or for you to share with our listeners, you know, the, the path and was it really that hard? Was it worth all the, you know, yeah. all the. Okay. You know, I know, I know where I can go to. Okay. So it's five years of, of me having done this nonstop, working my butt off. You know, I needed to, I wanted to get my green card. I wanted to make a name. I wanted to do everything. Over this year of COVID, I have readdressed what I want to put my time into. Because initially, it's all about, I want an agent, a manager, movies, make money, an Oscar, all of those things. As this time has progressed, I've looked at what it is that I want for me in my life. So I was studying an Eastern practice called Ikigai, which I think is amazing, spelled I-K-I-G-A-I. -I. And it's all about finding your purpose and your bliss and, and ha having longevity in life. And how does that happen? And there are three things that they attribute this to. The community you're surrounded by some kind of task oriented thing like uh, gardening, you know, that, that gets the longevity and also your purpose and your bliss. So if you look at those three things with the industry I am in, my thing to people would be to say, listen, let's cut to the chase. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to be in it? What is your purpose? And my purpose for being in it actually altered because those initial things I now no longer need because I'm happy with who I am. So therefore, what are the things that are gonna enhance my life and help with that longevity? Who is my community? Well, I know that the community, my film community, I don't want to work with assholes. I just don't, it, just, it, doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Why do I want to spend my time with people that are not nice or people that don't treat my team nicely? Why would I want that? Is it just for the money? Is it from a place of fear? Is it because I'm gonna be told I'll never make it in this town? Then they're the wrong reasons. So, you know, buck up, stand it up for yourself. The gardening, that's the creativity for me. That's me getting my book out every day, writing, coming up with ideas, putting ideas into place, into practice, living by my own standards of, if I expect other people to work on a film and give their time, I'm okay with not earning for that if there's a reason for it that is helping me and I'm getting the best feeling and the best experiences and I'm able to pay my team, all good. And the last thing, the purpose, I'm a storyteller. I realized that that wasn't just through film. 
it was through my books, it was through my podcast, it's through my writing, it's through my medicine with words, it's through my methodology, it's through my mentoring. You know, it, it, there's a bigger picture here than just making a movie, which, by the way, anything anybody else wants to do, they can go and do. This is not about saying people need to do what I do. This is everybody's on their own path. And that's very important. I just know that I don't want to be living a life like a lot of people that I see, which is the fear factor, working with people that aren't nice, having to say yes because they're fearful. They have to do that project. Mm. No, then I'll, I'll close down and make my life how it needs to be. I don't need that. And that, that's brave. It's very brave. And I have to, I have to you know, remind myself that I'm not just going to say yes to things because someone thinks, here's a check. Here's a check. No, no, you're a nice person. I don't want to do it if you're not. Well, I can see that everybody list, um, that's probably watching this or listening it is just like, yes, Elizabeth preach it's just so hard to do on it and to be committed to to live those words you can say you're going to do it but actually to live it and actually you know say no to the bullies right say no to the opportunities that don't align with your values and so I really love how you're so focused on that and that there's that that you've created such a boundary for yourself right it is hard it yeah. is hard, Monica. This isn't about sitting here going, oh, yes, I love it. You know, of course I have to think, where's my money coming in from? How am I going to do that? But I think about what my soul is worth and what the purpose of me being here is. And I think, you know, don't, again, don't get me wrong. I'd say 99% of the time I am smiling and happy. And then there's that 1%, um, and I had it yesterday, where I just felt overwhelmed because I was trying to do the right thing and I had to stand up for something and my gosh did that go against every bone in my body and the resolution that has happened from that has meant that uh, there is no financial gain but the emotional gain and what I've been able to teach and preach and live by the standards that I believe in that's integrity mm-hmm. when someone says to you Oh, but listen, this is the way all creatives are. They're all like this. You just have to let it go. That was a red flag for me going, really? We have to accept that behavior? Do we? Do we though? Do I have to accept that behavior? Mm. Actually, I don't. And that was very hard. Mm. And so I think we're in a society where we can make those choices. But as I said, it's not that it's easy. I'm not sitting here saying it's easy, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what's important. So I love the outcome for you though, how it wasn't hard because it's not comfortable ever to stand up when something doesn't align with your values, but you spoke your, you used your words, you spoke your truth and the outcome was how was that? I mean, I'm sitting here with a feeling of relief. Again, I have to go through, you know, what you have to um, work out for yourself. Did I do the right thing? Have I done the right thing? Where did I go wrong? What, what, what do I need to take on board? What responsibilities do I need to acknowledge and learn from? And, and you know what's great about it is every opportunity is an opportunity to learn. So I'm actually directing a feature in the summer. And because of this situation that's just happened, I am now having a phone call on Tuesday with that team for clarity. Absolute clarity because I don't know if you know I always talk about the blue mini situation have you did I talk about that last time my blue mini cooper um let me just find it in here the blue mini cooper page 33 basically I wrote you may ask what this has to do with being a filmmaker play along with me for a minute describe a blue mini cooper how does it look so Monica tell me your blue mini cooper So I'm visualizing a little blue car, like kind of like one of those, I think they're like the little BMWs, like a shiny little blue car with four doors. And what kind of blue though? The blue that I'm picturing is almost like that electric blue. It's not like a navy blue. It's not turquoise. It's like an electric blue. 
And like a smarty. The, it looks like a smarty. Great. And what does the inside of your blue mini cooper look like? Is it leather? Is it plastic? What, what have you got as the um, Well, mine would be black leather for sure, because I love black. Um, and the tires would be like, I'm, I'm kind of like visual. So I'd see like this like little smarty colored blue mini with black leather interior and shiny chrome and tires with like the white around it, you know, kind of a cute little car. So your blue mini, absolutely perfect. I'm going to now tell you what my blue mini looks like. It is the Tiffany blue. It is a soft top and it has cream leather inside. So even though I said to us both come up with a blue mini Cooper, the detail of what that means for both of us is totally different. And so the reason I put that in here was because I was saying that you have, you think you're on the same, in, you know, visual, but you are on a totally different one. So clarity is important. And I know you and I were having a chat the other day about exactly, I kept saying to you, but tell me exactly what that looks like for you. What does that exactly mean? Mm. Because what you might see in your head seems perfectly clear, but to another person, it isn't. And that's something that I really speak my truth about now. So this whole experience has reminded me even more about that with the next one, get that clarity. And they've given me a budget. And I'm able to say, okay, I'm going to be truthful with you. This is what you can get for that. Five years ago, I would have said, I can do that. This is what we can do. And now I understand I need to say, no, no, let me be specific. I cannot get you Angelina Jolie for that budget. You know, it's not going to be the Hollywood experience you're thinking for that budget. We can do it, but you need to know what that looks like. And so that's where you take these opportunities and you say, what am I going to learn from it? And even if they're just reminders, that's all good. Well, I got to say, I love your visual of your um, soft top. And of course, you're in L.A. and I'm in Canada. So <laughs> it snows. I had to have almost changed on my tires. <laughs> well, but you know what? That's totally relevant because what you're talking about there is we are all filled with layers, aren't we? Who we are and then our layers. So even that is important where you're coming from will be affected by everything that you have experienced in life, where you live what your relationships are like, whether you have children, and mine are going to be from a different place. And we have to respect that from everybody. Respect is important, understanding is important, but then knowing when to move on is equally important. Very wise, Elizabeth. That's why I love our, con our conversations. Um, you know, I, you have so many, I, I, your book, you're going to have to, number one, the book that you just finished writing at the end of the podcast. I know the listeners are like, I want a copy of that book. So you're going to have to fill us in at the end. So please remind me if I forget to ask you at the end about the book. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Amazon, uh, film, fearless. Filmmaking without fear. Filmmaking without fear. Okay. The blue mini story and yeah. Yeah. just lots do of it as a director. Lots and lots of knowledge in there to share. But I want to ask you, you know, I see female leaders all around me that inspire me. What inspires you most about the female leaders in your world? Like, what is about them that inspires you? I, do you know, I don't look at it as female and male I just don't I feel like it's about who are the people that seem to have that leadership quality that inspires us and I will say a lot are female so so let's discuss that in a different way because I want to support all the women because I feel like it's my responsibility as a woman to help bring them up but I think if we can all get inspiration from everybody, who are those leaders that are actually encouraging from behind, supporting mm. from behind? That is what's important. I, um, I give my people that work for me as many opportunities as I can. And I don't think I realized how much I do that because on one of the other projects I was on, when I, I say to my team, okay, it's about elevating or earning, that all both, you know, but you have to have one or the other in a project. So for my team, they always want to aspire to be that next step up. 
So from a PA to a second second to a second AD to a first AD, you know, that's important. And I, I, I do that because again, there are no rules in this world. No one says you can't do that. And so this project was very clear that they said, you know, that's not what you can do. And I was like, whoa, that's interesting to see that. I'm such a supporter of elevating. I hadn't seen that before from somebody else. Um, because what does it do? It doesn't do any, it's no harm to anybody and it, it, it helps somebody feel good. So these leaders that whether they're male or female, that the male or female leaders is all about um, supporting and encouraging. And I think the reason that female leaders have got the edge, and I'm not saying every female leader is good, you see, that, that's why it's important to understand. I think they have the edge because we are nurturers. We've just got a side to us, most of us, that is sensitive, that nurtures, that isn't afraid to show emotion. And again, I'm not saying that there aren't men that are like that, but I'm just saying innately, through us as women mm. that's there um and i think that's why i like people and i've believe me again i've seen bad female leaders i have but the good ones that's what they have that's the edge mm. I, I behave like a mother on my set i am the mother and i will stand there and i will support my team and i am the person that's why being a director you just have to be a, uh, think of it like a mum or someone running a um an event or somebody that loves people it, it has to come from a nurturing place how appropriate that your name would be mother and daughter entertainment it is correct yeah it is so it's, uh, it's very important to me so you touched on a little bit about um the importance of that male allyship so why is it so important to recognize men support hers as our allies and our champions? Well, I definitely, I wouldn't be where I am without them. The ones that have supported me are unbelievable. Um, I, I, I'm very fortunate to have these fantastic mentors. And um, I mean, there are two, two that are definitely have supported me throughout and there are countless others that come in and support and then you know maybe they're on one project or but but even my my team you know my dp is actually male and it was funny because it was kind of before the whole movement of i should you know be looking at a female driven crew because he is so kind so sensitive so wonderful so supportive why would i just say no you can't do it because you're not a woman so i found somebody that does that and he's been with me through thick and thin and we've learned together. So these, these, these men that have supported me have been phenomenal. Again, there are some that haven't and I've moved on and I've, I've left them. But the ones that have, you know, they are amazing. Very cool. Well, I think it's really important, especially as we move the needle to, you know, embrace um, the fact that men and women are, work really well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So Elizabeth, it wouldn't be Women of Inspiration podcast without asking you, um, who in, who is a woman of inspiration who inspires you? Um, I would definitely say my daughter. Even today, with what I've been going through, I have learned from her this last year about boundaries. She taught me about her boundaries. And I have reminded myself constantly and I have been able to say to myself, hold on a minute, what would Isabella do? What, what? She's 18 and she has stood up for herself and said no to things that I would not have done. And even I sat there with her and said, are you sure you should say no to that? And then she's given me a reason. I've gone, no, you're absolutely right. That's your, that, absolutely. So she is my inspiration, my motivation. Um, she is is my encouragement I, I i wouldn't be who i am without her mm. well i hope that she's going to have the opportunity to listen to that i am sure that will make her very proud um and then actually just the the fact that you and her are both on this journey together is super um significant and important so um yeah i i actually knew that you were going to say your daughter you know i was just like i bet she's going to say isabel Yep, I knew. Anyways, thank you so much, um, Elizabeth. It's always such a pleasure. Um, again, uh, your definition of a woman of inspiration to you would be? 
Ah, oh, I got goosebumps when you said it because it's just such a powerful question, isn't it? Um, and, and also the answer does change depending on your situations, but I'd say the core would be somebody that really wants to help bring other women into whatever industry it is. They want to be there for them. There's no competition. It's about saying, we're all in this together. How can I help you? And that's where I really am at the moment. It's all I want to do. Well, thank you for sharing your words of wisdom and sharing your expertise and your beautiful story um, and giving us a peek at the sunshine where you're from in LA. We look forward to uh, the 2021 Roadshow. And of course, you and I have a lot of talk about some really interesting projects with Universal Women's Network. So super excited to work on these projects with you. And I just want to say to those that are listening, um, how can they get a hold of you, learn more about your journey? We only tipped, we only saw a piece of the iceberg, right? You only see that much of the iceberg. You have so much more to share and you've done so much in the past year. It's a whole other podcast. Um, but where can they learn more about you, Elizabeth? Oh, I am very, I am, I'm very transparent. I'm everywhere. So if you literally Google my name, you'd see all the articles about me. I'm at Elizabeth underscore B underscore T or Elizabeth Blake Thomas on social media. Mother Daughter Entertainment, so that's motheranddaughterent.com. Also Medicine with Words, medicinewithwords.com, at Medicine with Words, that's my whole methodology. Uh, but I say on my phone call to people, I say I'm available on all platforms. <laughs> well, so there it is, everyone. Um, you can get a hold of Elizabeth. She is extremely open to um, having a conversation with you. Um, she has lots yeah. of wisdom to share. Please reach out to her. And I just want to say thank you again for you know being such a champion for women, uh, being a part of uh, the Universal Women's Network. Um, your voice is, you know, we value you and your voice as part of our network so much. So thank you for taking the time today um, to to share your wisdom and. For those that are watching and listening, please, if you enjoyed this podcast, share it with the world. Um, we want to inspire women from all areas um, of the globe. And I certainly think that 67% uh, of the women learn from other women. That's the stat. I would say it's probably more like 98%. So please share this with someone who needs to hear these messages today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And Elizabeth, we will see you very soon. Thank you.